In this video, you're going to learn about the law of detachment and the law of syllogism, and we're going to go through a couple examples together. So first of all, what exactly is this law of detachment? Well, this is one of the laws of logic, and the way you can diagram it out, just to kind of help yourself remember it is, if P then Q, let's say that that's a true conditional statement. If P happens, therefore Q will happen. So what we can think of with the law of detachment, it's like two quantities. You have a hypothesis, you have a conclusion, meaning if this hypothesis is satisfied, meaning this event happens, it's going to cause Q to happen. The mistake that students sometimes make is they'll say, oh, uh, Q happened. It must have been caused by P. And that's actually what we call an invalid argument. Sometimes it's referred to as the converse error because we're saying it backwards. We're going against the direction of that arrow. It's like a river. The river just flows one way, right? So this causes this, not the other way around. So law of detachment. Law of syllogism, you've got three statements. You've got, uh, or three quantities, I should say. So if P then Q, let's say that that's a true conditional statement. And if Q then R, let's say that's a true conditional statement. If P happens, therefore R will happen. You can think of it like the transitive property, sort of, if you're familiar with that, meaning like, you know, P causes Q, and then where this one uh, ends up, this next statement starts off with that same quantity, then if Q, then R happens. So through this like domino effect, I like to call it, if P happens, R will happen, okay? So it's kind of like if you pass your class, or if you pass your final, then you pass your class. If you pass your class, then you're gonna go on to the next course. So if you pass your final, through that chain of events, you're going to go on to the next uh, math course, right? So that's the key. Let's go through some examples. The first one, these are not mathematical ones. They're just kind of fun uh, sort of real life examples, but you'll get the gist of it. If you, get your, if you get 12 or more points on your driving record, then you will lose your license. Okay, so you know what points are, like if you get pulled over for a ticket of some sort, right? Now, whatever comes after the if, this is our hypothesis, right? So you get 12 or more points on your driving light record, right? Then, whatever comes after the then, this is the conclusion, you will lose your license, right? So basically, if you speed, you know, you're going to lose your license, right? Too many times, right? Now, let's uh, look at A. So Joe lost his license. What can you conclude? Well, what do you think about that one? Do you think that Joe got more than 12 points on his driving record or no? This one, you can see they're saying it backwards. They're saying if Q happens, P must have been the cause of it, right? Which is not true. It's getting 12 or more points is what causes you to get, lose your license. Losing your license doesn't necessarily mean it was caused by getting 12 or more points. You may have lost your license because you failed to pay the license fee, you know, like maybe to, to renew your license or maybe you didn't pass the... Uh, vision test or the driving test or some other reason, right? So this is what we call an invalid argument or the converse error. But let's just say in, invalid. Okay, we'll just say invalid argument. Okay. Now, let's look at letter B. Bob got 13 points on his driving record. What can you conclude? What do you think about that one? Well, look what's happening here. The hypothesis was satisfied meaning that this condition of getting 12 or more points on someone's license, that's what happened. That's what Bob did. What can we conclude? Bob lost his license, right? So that one is, again, this law of detachment. We have these two quantities, if P, then Q, say that's true. P happens, then we can naturally make the assumption that Q is going to happen, assuming that this conditional statement is true. Let's take a look at the law of syllogism now. For number two, we have if you don't sleep more than six hours a night, your learning will be impaired. If your learning is impaired, then you will fail your math class. Okay, so let's just assume that this is a true statement. I know it's not ironclad, uh, you know, true statement, but let's just pretend for this example that it's absolutely true. So remember, whatever comes after the if, this is our hypothesis. So if you don't sleep more than six hours a night, then 
I should have wrote the word then in here, but it's implied, then your learning will be impaired. That's the conclusion. Now let's look at the second sentence. If your learning is impaired, then you will fail your math class. So notice what we have here. We have two statements. And sometimes I like to even abbreviate it. Like uh, I would say something like, uh, don't sleep, then we'll say impaired. So you can kind of try to pick like one or two words. Then where it picks up on the next sentence, it says, if your sleep is impaired, so let's just say impaired, then fail math class. We'll just say fail. So notice where this one statement ends, okay, like the conclusion, is the hypothesis of the second statement. So it's kind of like a connector in a sense. So this causes this, but then this causes that. So through this domino effect, if you don't sleep, what's going to happen? You're going to fail your math class. Let's assume that's true for this fun example, okay? Let's look at letter A. Sam failed his math class. What can you conclude? So what do you think for that one? If somebody said to you, Sam failed his math class, what can you conclude? Would you say that he didn't sleep? A lot of times people do that because they're just kind of thinking like, um, they're just kind of making like uh, associations. They say, oh yeah, these two things are associated, so yeah, one causes the other, the other one causes the other. You know, it's like there's no sense of order to it or uh, cause and effect or this using the laws of logic, right? It's just kind of free thinking, you know, about it. But let's look at what's happening. They're actually saying that this is happening backwards. And that's what we call an invalid argument, right? So this is invalid. Sam uh, could have failed his math class because he didn't show up for the final, or he didn't show up at all, or he didn't study, or he was caught cheating on his test, or who knows, however many other possibilities, right? But the main thing is that we, we're not, we don't have this domino effect where the one event is causing the next, and then that next one picks up and it causes the third, and so through that chain of events, right? Let's look at letter B now. Tom only sleeps four hours per night. What can you conclude? Look what's happening here. Tom doesn't sleep very much, right? And to be more specific, he's sleeping less than the six hours per night. So that means that his you know, his ability to learn is going to be impaired. And if his learning is impaired, we know that means that he's going to fail his final, or he's going to fail his math class, right? So in this case, because this initial condition, this initial statement was fulfilled, that means that this chain of events is going to be triggered. This is the law of syllogism, and we know that Tom is going to fail his math class. Tom fails math, okay? Now, is that, is that really true? No, maybe Tom's one of those people that can subsist on three or four hours a night, and he's fine. That's just how he's built, and uh, that's great. These are just kind of fun life examples, but when it comes to a, like a mathematical example, and if a statement is actually true, these laws are going to work as we discussed. So if you want to see more examples, you want to practice, you want to test yourself, which I highly recommend, follow me over to a, another video I did talking about law of detachment, law of syllogism. Pause that video and see if you can test yourself and I'll see you over in that video.